So I saw you post a video of Scheffler. Would you, was that you asking Scheffler that question when he, he moved? Yeah. So, so when I was uh, last out of the FedEx Cup playoffs, you know, Scotty had, uh, it took him a while to get into the winner's circle. He got it done at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. And then suddenly the floodgates just opened. So I was there, I was in the press room and I'm like, I've got to ask him, what changes, you know, when you wait so long to get that first win? And in horse racing, we, we call it the light bulb angle. Something just goes off. And, you know, Scotty shared some great insight. He's like, well, I was always a winner. You know, in high school, I figured out ways to win. In college, I just figured out ways to win. And he brought it up through the ranks as a young professional. And again, and I think it comes back to just simplifying things out there in the high pressure situations where a lot of young guys, and this can be you know applied across a, a multitude of sports, is they get in their own way. You know, uh, another golfer that I think gets in his own way a little too much is Roy McIlroy. He's just thinking too much about golf swing and not about what's in front of him. And when you can see that he's just having a good time, not overthinking it, that's when you get the uh, you know the best version. So for Scotty Scheffler, he's figured it out. And you know, for the golf purists, if I ask them. What's so good about Scotty Scheffler? The golf swing's not good. I mean, he's doing the Elvis dance moves as he's teeing off there. It's not a textbook move. The short game is good. He keeps it in play, but he's not the longest driver, and he just keeps the big numbers off the scorecard. He knows that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Put yourself in the right position over the weekend when it matters, and if you keep showing up, you keep contending, eventually the wins will come in your favor. And once you do it once or twice, it's confidence that you've got over the next guy. And it works, you know, flip side to that. A lot of young guys, a lot of young athletes, it can build up scar tissue. The, you know, the more and more you put yourself there and you don't get it done, you start down yourself. It's in the back of your mind. So Scotty Scheffler, he figured it out quick enough and uh, it's been no slowing down since. And, and I just like the interaction that you guys had because he was so genuine and you were as well. It was such a simple question, but a complex question at the same time, which I just nerded out from the journalistic perspective because that's what I want to do. I want to simplify the question, but they want to simplify their game as well. And yeah. and it's so interesting because the, the team that I cover with the A's are so many young guys, and I always hear, you know, they want to slow the game down. And that yeah. just basically means simplifying everything. And it's such an easy thing to express and to talk about, but so difficult, especially with the sport like golf, where you're in your head so much. Yeah. And, and that's just, and I think about Matty Fitz too, like he's very analytical and he's very into the stats and you know, all the, the, the numbers that he keeps track of. I want to be inside his dome just to see like how he's able to slow the game down because it's numbers, it's constant. It's a and lot. To just, to just go out there and then have a good, a good day and good uh, round on the greens. Like, that blows my mind. And I just loved how you approached that question. That was really, really cool. Yeah. And I mean, fair, fair credit to Scotty as well. A lot of athletes don't want to share a lot of insight or information, which I totally get as well, because, you know, the press can go after him at times and they can't be the kindest, but Scotty Scheffler, he gives a lot. And I think that's why he's such, uh, you know, held in such high regard. And I mean, I got so much respect for him as a golfer and as a person uh, as well. And he just reminded me, you know, when I first got my start in caddying, it was uh, for my friend. She was number one amateur in the world. She was a class act, but she would turn to me, you know, halfway through, uh, you know, say round three over the weekend in contention of a tournament and be like, what's my score? I'm like, what do you mean what's your score? You're a professional golfer and you don't know what you've just had on a hole or if you're two under, three under, four under par, but it was just that mindset of I'm just oh. playing the next shot that's in front of me. I'm not going to look at the scoreboard. I'm not trying to play numbers of where I need to be. I'm going to do the best with the next opportunity that comes up. I'll make the most of it. Whatever happens, happens. And so be it. And I always found that, you know, the, the, the better players, something about the high pressure situations, it's um, I think it, it can either make you or crumble you, but the better ones just have this ability to heighten the awareness and get, get the blinkers on. It's that laser focus where I've seen some really talented athletes on the golf course, playing other sports where they get under the pump and they don't look like what we expect to see in that situation. You know, it gets too busy up top and they just uh, they just don't have it. So the best ones know how to harness that energy and just focus in on uh, the finite details. I've noticed that the good athletes, I hear them being described as even keel. They just yeah. they, they maintain, 
even which I thought was like a cliche answer, but after a while you notice that's kind of what separates the good from the great. And yeah. I think that, so that pro that you were referring to, did you notice that when you introduced yourself or met more professional golfers, did they have that same mentality? I mean, obviously they're always keeping track to a certain extent, but were they just like the same thing? They don't constantly keep track of their score. No. So, so I mean, the good ones I thought were uh, similar in that regard, but you got a lot of overthinkers and most of the overthinkers I know would be good enough to hold on to their tour cards, but probably weren't winning as much as they should have because you're getting contention late on a Sunday. And if you're an overthinker, well, you're bringing more information into the equation. I think it just confuses and muddles the whole thing where the simpler, the better. And I really do think that can separate the great ones. Not to say that, um, you know, they're slow thinking or anything like that. They just know how to have that mindset, focus on what you need to focus on and get the task at hand done. Just uh, don't be twisted by it. Once you go out there, you're doing your thing. And I, yeah, I've i got a good buddy, uh, baseballer, Bobby Janks, who uh, closed out for uh, the White Sox in a World Series. And I, I love getting his insight. I, I would ask him, like, what's it like going from the bullpen out, to, out there to the mound when they're playing that music? He's like, they start playing my music. That's all I'm thinking about. I'm like, you're not thinking about – technique or anything like that no 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 just get out there me against him one-on-one -on -one. i'm like wow that's amazing like for me i'd be like you know keep the elbow in don't go too far back what's your left foot doing and i guess that's the difference maker again that's what i'm talking about wagering i have no athleticism <laughs> that's why we're not out there we're sitting here. correct yeah, correct